So as I already said, I will be talking about global rate of change, and this has been a huge effort by multiple people. And this talk, first of all, is supposed to be done by Suzette, but sadly she's not here, um, so she asked me to do this talk instead. So I like to start presentation with a big number, and today, and I chose this one. So for we know that the humans have altered more than seventy five percent of all all ice free land. Right, but if you want to look into, and we are very interested in looking, okay, how quickly are we doing these changes, and how what's the magnitude of these changes, and have these changes happened everywhere the same in the world? So, as I already said, my name is Andre Mottl. I'm a postdoc at the University of Bergen, and through the presentation, there will be these QR codes, so you can either go ahead and do a print screen or use your phone. This this will will guide you to my Twitter account. So. I think it's good to start with a little bit of, um, I don't have to, you know, lots of people know this, but I want to put things into perspective. Of course, we know uh, since the uh, last uh, uh, last glacial maximum, since the last ice age, there has been an increase of temperature going to the relatively stable Holocene, right? There's been, there's been a massive change in the vegetation because of the ice and the humidity, et cetera, and of course, the temperature. But there is also the increase of temperature we, we see today, which are due to human human activity, right? Anthropogenic causes. And so our question was, the vegetation will respond, the ecosystem will respond to these changes in the temperature, but is the, is the impact we are seeing today, are the changes in the rate of vegetation change, meaning how quickly things are changing, are they comparable to the changes we saw in the transition from the LGM to the Holocene? So if you think about comparing rates of vegetation change, that's a little bit abstract. So I think we will use this example to a little bit let you think about what does it mean. So in this first example, there are ecosystem which in each step there are very little changes. We see maybe one or two taxa changed in each time step. In this next one, we see quite more changes in, in you know more taxa changed in each time step. And this final one, basically in each time step, we see that there is completely new ecosystem with very different taxa. So we can think about it as a, as a gradient of different examples of different values of rate of change with the top one having the highest values. So uh, uh, Simon started exactly this is what we've done. And this is a study we published in Science in 2021 with me and Suzette as the first authors. And we used at that time over 1,000 records from Neotomer from fossil pollen. You can definitely see that uh, at that time, available of the data was heavily biased towards the northern uh, northern hemisphere. But of course, we know there's been quite a lot of work from the data stewards to make sure that the global south has more uh, you know samples and records. And that's definitely true since the two years since then. And this is basically it. This is the result of what we found in the study. And as you know, that you know what makes a very good picture in a in a or figure in a in a paper can have very terrible picture for presentation. So let me break down what actually are we seeing in this figure. So we'll start with six boxes, and each of these boxes represent one continent. So we summarized the patterns over continent, which are here represented by the silhouettes. And for each record within this continent, we will estimate the rate of vegetation change, how quickly things are changing. And then we summarize them over 500 years bin within the continent. And you can see them here plotted as the individual points. These are the, they are the binned values within the continent. And then what we've done, we fitted a, a weighted general additive model through each of these. And, and we found out what is the pattern, what is the temporal pattern of these changes. And already here we can see the first exam, you know, first result of the study, where oh, everywhere in all continents we see this increase in rate of vegetation change, meaning that things start happening much, much, much faster, right? In let's say the last three or four thousand years. And what we did, we also looked what is the highest value since the LGM, and what is the highest value we observed today. And and this is an, an next res another result. You you definitely can see that the things, the speed of change we observe today are as fast, but mostly faster than anything we see since, since the LGM. And this is true worldwide. This is in in each continent. We the next what we look into, we also look into synchronicity. And this has been done using something which we call peak points. 
And what we've done within each record, within each continent, we look at significant sudden changes in rate of change, because this is how rate of change often behave. There is not, not much happening, and suddenly there is increase, right? There is things happening. And we mark these sudden changes within each record as peak points. And then we look how many records within a continent do have peak points as this time period. So you can think about the synchronicity. If lots of records within a continent suddenly increase the rate of change, there has been lots of things happening at the same time, the synchronicity increased. And again, we fit the general additive model through this to, to see the pattern. And again, global wise, we can definitely see that again, this increase not only in the rate, uh, the speed of changes, but also the synchronicity of these changing, meaning that within a continent, most of these records, a lot of these records start changing at the same time. The next thing what we looked at is, is we have the, sorry, we have the rate of change curve, we have the synchronicity curve. And the next thing which we look at, we've taken the first derivative of these of these curves of this function and compare if they are significantly different from zero. And if they do, we place this asterisk or point, these black dots on there. And this means that at that time, the the curve of the uh, of the of the trend significantly differ, right? Going either up or down or change trajectory. And overall, for both of these patterns, we see this interesting thing that already, you know, roughly three or four thousand years ago, things start increasing, which is surprisingly early. And that's basically it, right? That's that's the main result for the whole figure. I hope this is more now, you know, more easy to read. But I highly, highly recommend going into the into the paper and reading uh, it, you know, properly because, of course, I can't summarize everything in these uh, ten minutes. We also did additional. Of course, we did additional things. So, for example, one thing we looked, we we we. Uh, did the uh, uh, analysis again. So we replicate the same analysis, but we look not only for the whole continent, but also on the subcontinent level, right? So we, we group our records together in some way and look at these patterns of these, of these smaller scale. And I sadly don't have time to go over them now. So, you know, to sum things up, the main messages are the rate of vegetation change are as fast or faster today than anything we see in the LGM, and that's true for all continents. And these changes start surprisingly early, right? Already three or four thousand years ago, we start that the curve of each uh, of these changes start increasing already. So this is, you know, kind of the idea that lots of these things we observe today and with the with the neoecological studies and and these changes in beta diversity and turnover are just the tip of the iceberg right of the changes which started quite a long time ago and and are very very big and i think this is excel you know this is one of the really good example of what what people if you go together and 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 you know use open data and and can, can achieve, right? Because this is the first quantitative study for over 1,000 records on global biodiversity changes. So I would like to thank all data contributors, everyone involved in this project. I would especially thank data stewards who are doing an amazing job and, and Neotoma team all together. And that's everything for me in the, in the end. I, I have this slide again. I would like to especially thank Suzette. She's supposed to be here giving this talk, but she can't today, sadly. But here you can see four different links. The first one will take you to the paper published in Science. The second will take you to the R rate poll package, which is a package we developed to estimate the rate of change. And you can use it. It can uh, incorporate age uncertainty and incorporate uh, taxonomic standardization and some other cool things, which helps you with uneven distribution of your levels. The third link will guide you again to my Twitter. And the last but not least, a link will give you to uh, a website about the Human and Planet Earth project, which is a project where I'm currently working on. With that, I would like to thank you for your attention, and I'm looking forward to the discussion after all the talks. Thank you very much.